Would you knowingly eat food, drink water, or breathe air that contains toxic chemicals and microplastics linked to cancer that are contained in sewage sludge from Victoria, BC's wastewater treatment plant? Right now, Forever Chemicals, which true to their name last nearly forever in our environment, such as PFASs and microplastics, as well as PAHs, lead, mercury, dioxins, and pharmaceuticals are making their way into our water, air, and soil through the bioaccumulation of tons of these toxic chemicals that remain in the sludge after the wastewater from our homes, industry, businesses, and healthcare facilities is processed. Since 2022, the CRD plan was to use these dried biosolids as an alternative to fossil fuels in a cement plant, which is in keeping with a ban on the land application of biosolids the CRD board passed in 2011. Instead, every day, 10 tons of this toxic sludge, also known as biosolids, has been spread or buried at Victoria's Heartland Landfill, where wind and rain erosion disperses these forever chemicals into the neighboring farms, fields, forests, and watersheds. As a toxicologist, I've been working in British Columbia since the mid-1990s. So understanding the sources and nature of contaminants is key to who I am. And raising concerns with science, with evidence, is one way to stop the flow of harmful contaminants into the environment. Biosolids are essentially all the retained pollutants that are associated with particles that come from our homes, industry, hospitals, universities, and the like, and end up in biosolids which could be distributed on land. So understanding what's in biosolids is key to eliminating the problem in the first place and is key to managing any potential concerns that might emerge. My name is Dave Cowan and I'm very proud to be the CEO of the Butchart Gardens located on the Saanich Peninsula. Our company is a national historic site of Canada. We're very proud to welcome over a million visitors from around the world each year. And we've been a member of the Peninsula Biosolids Coalition since its inception because we're very concerned about the disposal of biosolids at the Heartland Landfill. Where we stand today is about 3.5 kilometers downstream from Heartland, and we have a series of very important water licenses and wells between here and Heartland. I have a biology background, and I certainly have a board behind me that's very concerned about the governance behind running Heartland and this particular process, because our provincial regulations do not cover in the detail required all of the long-term forever chemicals that are contained in biosolids. And what is being put in Heartland today will not just be there for my children's life, but their children's 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 life. We grow everything to go back into the gardens. So from a bioaccumulation point of view, we're very concerned. We don't buy soil, we manufacture soil. So the plants today are capturing whatever is in the atmosphere, putting that into their tissue and then it's coming back into the garden in future generations as compost. So we're very susceptible to the, the scientific fact of bioaccumulation and, and this is why we're going on record as being concerned. It's not just the disposal that's happening at the Heartland Landfill that's concerning to us. The CRD is proposing policy that would allow biosolids to be spread around the Capital Regional District, either in home vegetable gardens or on road shoulders around the region. That is very concerning to us because of the propensity of biosolids, dangerous forever chemicals within them, to stick to the bioplastics that are contained and dispersed throughout the region. There's some very solid research coming out of UCLA, for example, that says this is a danger, frankly, that we have to be cognizant of in our policy for the disposal of biosolids. I'm here on behalf of the Friends of Todd Creek Watershed. We are a volunteer organization that has been working in the watershed for the restoration uh, for over 25 years now. We worked with Butchart Gardens, Peninsula Streams and Shorelines, Sartlet First Nation, and the Friends of Todd Creek Watershed to actually create a fishway that will overcome the obstacle of this very, very old dam. We are very concerned with the new information that we have about biosolids about the land application itself. And new information is showing us that 
it actually can harm aquatic and terrestrial species, that it accumulates within the soil, and that accumulates all the way up into the food chain and into the food we eat. Our area here is very active as a farming and garden and aquifer itself as wells for people that live in this area. We, as an organization, are participating in absolutely every consultation opportunity possible, preventing the land application of biosolids. And at this point, we are very, very concerned that all of rural Saanich and particularly the residents of and the people that work in this area will not be considered in the final decision around ap land application of biosolids and the use of biosolids. The ban on the land application of biosolids really goes back to when I was first elected to Victoria City Council and the CRD in 2008. And as part of my role on the CRD, I was on the core area liquid waste committee. As a region deciding that instead of dumping our sewage waste into the ocean, that it was far too toxic to do that. And instead of that, we were going to do some waste processing. And we we're gonna take this waste, dewater it, and ultimately dump it on our limited land base here on Vancouver Island. Now intuitively that didn't make much sense to me and as an academic I decided to look into the matter a bit and the more I looked the more I found academic articles and publications that showed that there is no way that you could do the land application of biosolids safely and that this was absolutely not a sustainable practice. So I reached out to organizations like the Georgia Strait Alliance and the BC Sierra Club, as well as other environmental organizations and, and food security organizations like the Island Chef Collaborative. And all of them came together to push for a ban on the land application of biosolids, which was passed in 2011 and then reiterated again in 2013. And that's been in place here in the CRD since then, making us leader in this space and joining other communities around the world that are pushing back on the land application of biosolids. I sometimes get asked what other jurisdictions are actually moving away from the land application of biosolids. And I'm happy to share that we do not stand alone in this. In fact, in Europe, environmental leaders like Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, Slovakia have banned the land application of biosolids after years of going ahead with this practice because they found it toxified their land so badly and their environment so badly that they had to ban it and move towards waste to energy options instead. In the US, the entire state of Maine recently banned the land application of biosolids specifically because the contamination of PFAS on farmlands had made the meat and the milk and other produce coming off the uh, region's farmlands too toxic to sell or for uh, human consumption. We stand at the vanguard with these other environmentally conscious jurisdictions in, in pushing for more sustainable practices that won't impact our public health and won't impact our environment. One of the most convincing documents that came to the CRD in support of the ban on land application of biosolids came from the UVic Environmental Law Society. They did an environmental scan of legal cases in Canada and the US involving the land application of biosolids, and they found that not only were jurisdictions that moved ahead with land application of biosolids viable, that farmers as well that were to uh, adopt this as a practice on their land could be viable for not only impacting the health of uh, animals and humans, but also for reducing the property value of the lands around them. And so there is definitely legal liability involved with moving ahead with the land application of biosolids in the CRD. And it's us taxpayers that are ultimately on the line for this. More recently, the state of California sued 3M, one of the biggest chemical manufacturers in the world, for over $10 billion for uh, contaminating the drinking water in California uh, through PFAS contamination. So we can see that the risks are real, they are unavoidable, and they come at a very high cost in terms of human costs, but also uh, in terms of pure financial costs as well. Yeah, we've been here since the 1860s, and the Mitchell family's been farming on the peninsula for since then and continuously ever since. Never done anything that we would put on the soil that may be detrimental to the soil. And biosolids, who knows? I mean, scientists and, and scientifically they're looking at it, but I don't see anywhere where it would encourage me to use any biosolids on our land. 
you know, we're growing vegetables and berries for food. So why would we do anything like that would detriment our, our quality of produce that we're supplying locally? Recently, it was brought to our attention at the Peninsula Ag Commission. You know, we had a good round table discussion at one of our meetings and there was not one farmer that would be interested in using it for land application on any of our farms, considering what may be very detrimental to local food and the production of local food. We're here at Durant's Lake and just adjacent is the Mount Work Mountain and the Heartland Landfill. And dumping biosolids in the landfill threatens this lake and we can't afford to destroy the quality of this lake in this precious area. The Mount Work Coalition began about four years ago when a group of concerned residents got together after hearing that the CRD was going to expand the landfill and cut down 73 acres of forest. The CRD began spreading biosolids in the landfill. They began dumping the biosolids and burying the, the biosolids. So this also concerned the Mount Work Coalition. In the past, the Heartland Landfill has had a history of leaks. For example, two years ago, the liquid waste leaked from the landfill. Uh, we're very concerned that there are leaks happening in the landfill and when they place biosolids in the landfill, it all filters down. And when there's extreme weather, rainfall events, that contributes to runoff and biosolids and the PFAS chemicals run into the streams and rivers and lakes. It gets into the groundwater and it contaminates our wells. At the Butcher Art Gardens, we're aware that safe triple bottom line solutions exist for the disposal of biosolids. For example, thermal conversion. We encourage everybody to learn and be aware that our partners, like organic farmers on the peninsula, what we do here at the gardens, big parts of the tourism economy are impacted by this process that's happening now at Heartland. We are a tourism leader in Victoria. My colleagues have worked very hard at a destination level to run our tourism economy sustainably. In fact, we're award winning from that perspective. And it's important that our local government supports us with better policy around the disposal of biosolids. The good news is that solutions exist. As a former deputy minister, I'm very familiar with the regulatory process associated with managing waste streams, such as biosolids. The best solution is the thermal conversion of biosolids. Thermal conversion does not mean incineration. It means heating biosolids to a very high temperature and producing a biochar product, which is, doesn't contain the toxic chemicals in the biosolids and provides a fossil fuel free energy source. And it also sequesters carbon. So it has all of the attributes of a circular economy where the biosolids can be reused safely in the environment. And it meets the CID's stated goals of a triple bottom line. The biochar has a revenue stream. It's a multi-million dollar product and it can be used to generate revenue to offset the costs of the thermal conversion plant. As we've said, it sequesters carbon, it removes toxic chemicals, and it protects public health for society. So it has all of the attributes that CID want in a triple bottom line solution. There are many thermal conversion plants operating around the world, mainly in Asia and in Europe. They're all very effective at managing waste streams, such as biosolids. There's not so many in North America, so it's important that this thermal conversion plant is established as a demonstration plant to show that it can actually meet requirements set out by the regulatory agencies. Time is of the essence. Every day we produce 10 tonnes of biosolids. Every day these biosolids are being land applied at the Heartland Landfill. We've heard of the concerns about the application of biosolids in Heartland and the concerns about application anywhere else in the CID, which where it's currently banned. We must move expeditiously to align the procurement process studied by the CID with the regulators in Victoria and Ottawa so that we can have a demonstration project up and running within two years that does the job, meets the CID goals of a trip and bottom line and advances the solution 
of biosolids management in this region.